Hello everybody and welcome back to me Chanel and today we're going to be talking about acetylcholine and cadaverine, what they are and how they work. I hope y'all enjoy. To start, acetylcholine, to start, acetylcholine or other known as 2-acetoxy and, and, and trimethyl ethanaminium is an organic compound that functions in the brain, body, and many types of animals, including humans. This is a neat little program that I found where you can look at the chemical structures of these compounds. This is acetylcholine. It acts as a neurotransmitter, and its name is derived from its chemical structure. It is an ester of acetic acid and uh, choline. Parts of the body that use or are affected by acetylcholine are referred to as cholinergic. Acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter used at the neuromuscular junction. In other words, it is the chemical that motor neurons of the nervous system release in order to activate muscles. Next, what is cadaverine? Well, cadaverine, or other known as pentane-1,5-diamine, is an organic compound with the formula CH25NH22. And here we are again, but this time, this is cadaverine in your 3D retrospect. And it's classified as a diamine, so it has two amine groups. It is a colorless liquid with an unpleasant odor. It is present in small quantities in living organisms and is often associated with the, the putrefaction of animal tissue. In humans, molecular modeling and docking experiments, experiments have also shown that cadaverine fits into the binding pockets of the human TAR6 and TAR8. Now, why are these so important? Well, acetylcholine is vital in your biological system for necessary function. Without it, you wouldn't be able to move your arms, your legs, and even your mouth to eat. Acetylcholine also intervenes in other numerous physiological functions, such as regulating cardiac contractions, blood pressure, intestinal peristalsis, glandular secretion, and etc. Cadaverine is also vital to the decomposition process of dead animals, and can be found synthesizing in plants. Cadaverine also has been found to have a bit of therapeutic pharmacological properties. Now, how does acetylcholine reflect cadaverine? Well, to start, they are both organic compounds and can be found in living organisms even if just in scarce bits. They both possess am amine functional groups and are naturally produced. Now, how do they differ? Well, that's a bit more easy. For a matter of fact, acetylcholine helps facilitate movement functions as a living organism. Well, cadaverine facilitates decay once the organism has died. And finally, in the most obvious, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter, while cadaverine is not. Now, are there any risks that you should be aware of that relate to cadaverine and acetylcholine? There are two main health risks that do involve or are related to acetylcholine and cadaverine. Because of the properties of acetylcholine, drugs that affect the cholinergic systems can have very dangerous effects ranging from paralysis to convulsions. For cadaverine, elevated levels have been found in urine samples of patients with, with defects on lysine metabolism. Cadaverine's odor is commonly associated with bacterial vigenosis, but other than that, there really isn't much else that you need to worry about. Now for today's conclusion, you now know what acetylcholine and cadaverine are, how they function, and what their structures are like, the importance and uses for them, and what the risks associated with them are. Now with all that said, I hope that was helpful.